and golden. Hey everyone, welcome to the Hangover channel. My name is Nikita. Right beside me, uh, Alex. Hi, Alex. Hi, Nikita. <laughs> and uh, with us, uh, the one and only John Cooper from Skillet. Hi, John. How's it going, guys? Great to talk to you today. Yeah, glad to Thank see you. you. So we have a few questions about your new album, maybe about your music and stuff. You decided to start a uh, new year with a new music and uh, your new album is called uh, Dominion. Can you tell us uh, a little bit about your new album? Sure, sure. So yeah, we decided to come out with a new record. It's, it's funny because um, it's difficult to know when to release a new record in a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> because you're, you know you're wondering um is, is the pandemic going to be over is it going to be almost over is it be halfway over is it never going to be over and i just felt that it would be best to to put out this record at the top of of 2022 and kind of kind of declaring a new year because it's a hard difficult uh two years all all over the world And, uh, you know, what's interesting is if you think about the, the, the amount of things in our lives that we have all experienced at the same time, you know, in my lifetime, there's never really been anything like that, except for uh, maybe the turn of the millennia, you know, <laughs> when, you know, when, when the 2000s came in. Other than that, there's not been anything that I would say the entire world is experiencing at the same time. And so I wanted to write an album that was uplifting, that was encouraging, that gave people hope that gave them a little bit of uh, energy, you know, energy to face whatever problems they had. And so that's why we decided to release Dominion. And I hope that it's given people, I hope it's helping people get through those bad days because there's, there's a lot of bad days. We've all had them. Yeah, that's right. Uh, is there any difference uh, uh, in the working on that record and the previous record? Any differences? Yeah, I mean, it was really interesting because we, we were we were we were going. Basically, what happened was this: we had some song ideas. Uh, I wasn't necessarily planning on recording an album, but we had these song ideas, and I wanted to work with my producer Kevin Churko. And I said, "Hey, can uh, can we fly out and and work on some music?" But then, because of COVID, all of the travel restrictions kept changing. You know, there new new restrictions, and they get lifted other restrictions. And, and finally, I was like, it's just, it's not going to work. But I had this song I really wanted to work on. And I didn't want to do it over Zoom. You know, like imagine us talking right now and us trying to write a song together. <laughs> it's just really, <laughs> it's, it's really, uh, in English, we would say it's sterile. You know, it, it doesn't feel very alive. You know, it feels, uh, I don't know. And so I was like, well, let's just try to write over Zoom and we'll see how it goes. And so the truth is, we did it and it went really well. I think we were all surprised. And so then what was interesting is that we were able to record. So my band, you know, my wife, Corey, who plays guitar and skillet, she's a great producer. So we just began producing tracks in our studio and we would send them to our producer or our producer would begin tracks and send them to us. And then we would add stuff or change stuff and we'd send it back. And, and we ended up doing the entire record like this because it went really well. And so I think what was different for me was uh, being willing to try new things, maybe because I wasn't in the studio, <laughs> you know, I wasn't there to say, no, I don't like that. Don't do that. And I was like, well, let's try it. Let's see how it goes. And so because of that, I think it made the, the record sound a little different. And it's uh, it's a little heavier. I think this record is a little more, it's very big, like on the on the bottom end, the bass and the drums are really big. And it just made it more aggressive. And so we just said, all right, we're going to record the whole record <laughs> via Zoom. It, it was really bizarre. But, but also, I think that it kind of works because when you're doing it, this Zoom writing or even like interviews, Like, wouldn't it be a lot more fun if I could see you guys face to face in Russia and we could do an of interview? Course. That would be a lot of fun, right? And because we did it Zoom, uh, that feeling of isolation and that aggression of how annoying this is and how discomforting this is, I think that that came out in the lyrics. So some of the lyrics feel aggressive and they feel very loud and very passionate. And I think the sense of isolation probably fell into that. 
Yeah, that's a really strange time right now with the COVID and stuff. You can travel just not uh, through the world, just uh, inside the country. It's a really hard stuff to do. Yeah. John, um, do you do you have any plans to go to Russia with tour? Could you tell us? We are speaking, yes, about coming back to Russia. Everything keeps changing, you know. <laughs> so yeah. it's like every day, every, every day. day. <laughs> so we are talking about it, and we are very eager, uh, very eager to get back to Russia because Russia is where our our biggest fans are. You know, the, our our craziest fans. So I'm very eager to come back, and um, I personally, I have a good feeling. Uh, I feel very optimistic that the world is is changing, and we are. I think it's very possible that we could come back this year, but I, I don't want to make any promises because I just don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have a really huge uh, fan base in Russia. Do you think uh, it's uh, because of uh, your successful music, or maybe it's? Uh, let me think a little bit. <laughs> Uh, maybe because um, why do you think uh, the Russian fans um, like your music so much? That's the sure. correct question, I think. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You know, I think that, um, I, I mean, I, I've been to Russia a number of times now, and I, I wouldn't claim to understand people in the country that well. But from what I can see from the fans that I've met, which has been a lot of people, it seems that people like that Skillet um, is very positive. And that Skillet's lyrics are very hopeful. And uh, I've had a lot of fans in Russia say that our music gives them hope. And I think that there's something, um, in English, I would probably use the word, there's romance. Do you know the word romance? There's something yeah, romantic sure. about Skillet's music. Um, because Probably because we also have girls in the band. And, and then we have the guys, like the hard rock. And then the girls are, are soft and they're pretty and it, it creates it creates a lot of uh, romance and, and dynamic in our music I think people relate to that and I also think that people relate to probably the family aspect between me and, and of course my wife you know we are married but all of skillet feels like a family and I it seems to me that Russians sort of relate to that I, I don't know if that's true but that's what I've picked up on John is it hard to work and play music with your wife <laughs> <laughs> I will say this. It's hard for my wife to work with me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> why? I mean, uh, why? Well, uh, just because um, I talk too much, you know, I'm, I, I'm always talking and I'm hyper and I can be kind of annoying. But I mean, yes, um, it, it, it's hard being on the road together to someone that you're married to. There's, there's no question about that. It's a lot of work because you're always together 24 hours a day. And and that that's hard whether you're married or, or even with your own, your band members, you know. Uh, but we are so lucky. I mean, we get to tour the world together as a family. And I think that the bond between me and Corey makes the whole Skillet band seem very stable, you know, very secure and very. Uh, there's an identity about the band of Skillet that I think probably is built on the foundation of me and Corey being married so luckily you know we toured around russia together you know i mean not many people in america ever dream of going to another country like russia and going to, to moscow and seeing red square and saint petersburg the artwork in saint petersburg and the architecture is it's something that a lot of americans dream of but they would never have the chance to see so i'm very lucky so let's talk uh a little bit more about your new album. Which song is your favorite? And uh, maybe which song is your least favorite on this record? <laughs> <laughs> that's great, Nikita. No one has asked me what my least favorite song is yet. Uh, that's very clever. Um, let's see. <laughs> let's see. I do my homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're giving me hard questions. All right. Let's see. Um, probably my favorite is a song called Destiny. Destiny is probably the song that sounds the most like older Skillet. And that's probably why I like it. It, 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 it. If you hear it, you go, oh, that's Skillet. You know, it's undeniably Skillet. It's, it's, uh, it's heavy. It's got some like double, double kick drum in it, which I like, you know, really good drumming. 
really loud guitars, but it's very melodic. And I think that what I like about the song is it's very emotional. And it, it is about not giving in to your darkest thoughts. We all had dark thoughts, especially in the last couple of years, COVID, isolation. People have struggled with you know depression and loneliness and alcohol abuse or, or drug abuse or, or whatever. And Destiny is saying, I'm not going to give in to those things. I'm not going to give in to the darkest parts of my brain. I'm going to believe and I'm going to have hope and I'm going to keep pressing on. And, uh, and that leads up to one of my favorite lines on the record, which is darkness ain't my destiny. Um, and I, I really like that. It gives me a lot of hope. And I, I, and I hope that it gives listeners a lot of hope as well. My least favorite song on the record. I don't know. I mean, um, I like them all. Um, I don't know. Maybe I would say, to tell you the truth, I like all the songs. Maybe Ignite, even though I actually really like Ignite. It's got a great riff and it's really heavy and it makes me want to go to the gym and work out, you know, do some exercise. But um, probably that song, the reason I like Ignite is because it's uh, you don't have to think too much about it. You just turn it on and it rocks. And maybe that's the reason, if I had to choose a least favorite, it would be my least favorite. Maybe because it's not as pensive. Yeah, again, for me, is uh, probably my favorite song from this record is uh, Surviving the Game because it is really hit hard right before this, uh, right in the start. It, it, it is hit hard. <laughs> Uh, right. I'm, I'm trying to listen to her, and my first thoughts was like, "Is it skillet, or, or maybe not?" And then the uh, chorus came in, and I, oh, okay, that's skillet. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. I love to hear that. Yeah, I mean, I do think that that's. Um, I think you're right. I think that surviving the game has some new, uh, some some new sounds for skillet. It is heavier. And in the verse, the, the way the song is written is a little different. It's a little more electronic. And, um, and, and again, in America, we might call it hip hop or, or urban. Do you, do you guys call it hip hop? Uh, not um, so much. We call it like more like electronic stuff. Okay. Yeah. Like, like maybe Linkin Park uh, yeah. and like that. Yeah, a little bit like that. And, 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 the, and the melodies are, are a little bit like that too. I was like, you can try to defeat me. You don't know with the pain that'll feed me. That's a little bit different for Skillet. And then the chorus sounds like Skillet. So I think you're right, Nikki. So you have a lot of albums. This one is 11th, I guess. Right, 11th album. And uh, which is your favorite album of Skillet? Maybe uh, a top oh, it's always three. Very difficult. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I've got a difficult questions. Um, maybe top three, top three uh, albums, yeah. Yes, um, I probably would say Comatose and Awake, and I think that I, I that, that Dominion would, would probably be my third. Um, I, I like Unleashed a lot, and uh, and I like Collide a lot. I, I mean, obviously, you know, I like all the records. It's hard to choose, but I think that I would say Comatose, Awake, and uh, and Dominion. I think those are my top three Skillet records. It shows. <laughs> Uh, you've been a band probably 25 plus years. Uh, it's a long period of time. Do you have any favorite moments uh, through your history or maybe just a favorite moments through uh, the history sure. of the band? Maybe well, actually top three favorite moments <laughs> once again. <laughs> yeah, we got some great, so many great memories. It's, it is hard to choose. I mean, I remember when uh, our Awake album was coming out. And at that point, uh, people have to, to realize that Gillette had been a band for 13 years when Awake came out. And Awake is our biggest album. But before then, we really weren't very big. So it took us a really, really long time. It took us about 10 years before we ever started getting known. And so when Awake was coming out, we weren't sure if people were going to like the album or not. And I remember the night it came out, I actually, me and my wife had gone to see a concert. And uh, because we went on vacation, the week the record came out. And I remember at the concert uh, that we were attending, I was getting text messages on my phone saying, you're not going to believe this. You know, Awake is the number one 
album on iTunes right now, you know, so, and, and I was like, what? That can't, that can't possibly, you know, be true. That was a really great moment because all of a sudden we realized, guess what? People do like the new album. And that was, um, that was pretty exciting because the song Monster really changed, um, you know, our, our career. One of my other favorite moments, I will say, was first time that we came to Russia and my uh, promoter, uh, Sergey, who's a good friend of mine, I didn't want to go to Russia because I thought no one would know who we were. <laughs> so I was thinking, nobody's going to know who we are in Russia. And our music's never been released here. And our, our promoter, Sergey, kept saying, people love Skillet in Russia. And I thought, that can't be true. And the very first show that we played in Moscow, I think it was called Club Milk. Was it called Milk? Oh, man, I could not yeah. believe the amount of people singing our songs. It was unreal. I, I was like, is this real? <laughs> and it was just, it was absolutely so cool, man. It's a good answer. <laughs> um, let's talk about trends. Your music changed a lot through these years. Uh, if we look at album, uh, a record like Collide, it sounds more grungy. Uh, then you start to put some electronic stuff and uh, changing the sound a lot. Is it because of trends? Uh, do you look um, looking for a new trends, or you just decided, okay, uh, we do it uh, well on the previous album. Let's start something new. Let's change the sound a little bit. Sure. You know, I think it's um, I think it's a little bit of both. You know, I um, we we love music, so we're always listening. You're always listening to what someone else is doing, and and sometimes you go, oh man, that's that's really cool. I really love that, and uh, and then it becomes a part of you. You know, it's like as a musician, you're always I'm always made up all of my favorite influences. You know, Metallica and Linkin Park and uh, and and all these great legacy bands, Bon Jovi and Motley Crue and Alice and chains and corn you know all this stuff is going to go into what makes your band and so i'm definitely always wanting to try something fresh something new and exciting and my wife Corey, as i said she's a producer so she enjoys making new kinds of music you know and trying new things and um and i always like to, to keep the fans uh surprised <laughs> you know, so you release a new song and they're like, oh, my gosh, that's really surprising. And I say, good. That's what I want. You know, I want people to be like, oh, my gosh, we heard that new song. It kind of sounds like Skillet, but it kind of doesn't sound like Skillet, uh, like you said earlier. So I always try to keep people guessing a little bit. Yeah, I see. John, what do you think about Slayer or Sleepknot? <laughs> because sure. it's a little bit cruel music. Yes, I know what you mean. I mean, um, I like a lot of metal. And, uh, and I've played with a lot of those bands. I love Slipknot. And let's see, I love Metallica. Uh, th there's a lot of, of bands like that that I really like. Uh, we played with Slayer a couple of times. Slayer was never one of my personal favorites, but they were certainly a talented band. And, you know, it was an honor to share a stage with them. So uh, obviously they're very talented. Not my favorite metal band. But I love Slipknot, uh, and um, Corey Taylor is a friend of mine as well. We toured with uh, Stone Sour, which, of course, is Corey Taylor's other band, and uh, we share a lot of fans. You know, every, every Skillet show, there will be people with Slipknot shirts on, so every time I see it, uh, I'll take a photo on stage, and I'll send it to Corey Taylor, and I'll say, see, Slipknot needs to have Skillet come out on tour. <laughs> okay, let <laughs> my T-shirt. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see, every time if somebody's got a Slipknot shirt on. You should probably send it to Corey right now. <laughs> I should. I should. I'll say, man, come on, Corey. Take, take Skillet and Slipknot to Russia. Make it happen. Yeah, 2022. Yeah, yeah. Done with COVID, 22. <laughs> it will be great. Uh, your bands have a huge show, a huge production. How long does it take to get ready to these shows, these kind of shows with Pyro? and stuff when you should know right exactly at time where is the pyro goes and uh, all this crazy stuff that's happening on stage. How many rehearsals uh, rehearsals does it take to produce right. this kind of show? You know, I think it just depends. Um, 
you know, we'll do rehearsals for two or three days to make sure that everybody knows what's happening, where you should be, where you should not be, <laughs> because, you know, you don't want anything bad to happen. But the truth is, some of it is just um, trial and error. I mean, sometimes you you try it and it doesn't doesn't go well or um, sometimes it doesn't work. You're expecting the pyro to go off and then it doesn't go off. And, you know, you always pray that it never goes off when it's not supposed to go off because then you get scared. But yeah, it does take a certain amount of rehearsal to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. You have a side project that's named Fight the Fury. Any chances we hear something new from your side project in near future? Maybe not. Possibly. Um, I think that uh, COVID kind of pushed everything back because, you, you know, uh, all of a sudden everything stopped. And so we had to, we released a new skillet record. So I'm not sure. I hope to record something new with Fight the Fury. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I will say that some of the elements of Fight the Fury we brought into the new skillet record you know, like surviving the game, there's a little bit of screaming, you know, I can be unstoppable, got up, all that stuff. That's more like Fight the Fury. And so we brought some of that into the skillet record. It made it a little heavier. Why not? <laughs> mm -hmm. And John, how you choose the songs for the playlist for the show? That's quite difficult because we have way Because you have a lot of songs. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, every once in a while, we'll run a fan poll ask fans what they want to hear. But in general, I know there's a certain amount of songs that we must play, you know, like Monster and Feel Invincible and, and The Resistance. There are certain songs you have to play, uh, yeah, Hero. And then after that, sometimes I try to play songs um, that sometimes there's a song that makes for a great live performance. You know, maybe it's not the best radio song, so it might not be the most popular song, but it's a great live song. And I always felt songs like that were like um, for Skillet, like Sick of It. Sick of It is a really good live song, even though it's not one of our most popular songs because it gets the crowd chanting, are you sick of it? You know, um, things like that. So if it's a great live tune, I'll put it into the set to make the concert have ups and downs. So uh, let's talk about your wife a little bit. <laughs> Tell me if I'm correct, you have an anniversary in this year or or a past year. Is that correct? Uh, uh, you say my daughter? Uh, wife. Oh, I'm sorry. You have, a, uh, you have an, an anniversary uh, in oh, this year. Oh, anniversary. Yes, anniversary. that's right. <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. That's um, in just about two weeks. Yeah, two weeks on March, March 1. And it's going to be our 25th anniversary, which is amazing. I can't believe I'm that old. I'm not even old enough to have a 25-year anniversary. Any special gifts to each other or you just uh, decided mm. to, to spend some time with you each know, other and that's it? Well, we're unfortunately... If it's a surprise, just, but just don't tell us. <laughs> <laughs> a surprise. I told Russia before I told you, baby. No. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately, we're, we are on tour, so we're playing concerts on our anniversary, which is fitting and it, it makes me laugh. But I think that we will probably go on uh, a vacation, maybe in April or May, to celebrate you know, 25 years. So no plans yet, but, but we need to do something. I just don't know what it's going to be yet. Does it uh, hard to be a father playing in, in a band? You have uh, two wonderful kids, so... Uh... Yeah, it, I mean, it takes a lot of work. I mean, uh, to be a father, to be a rock star, uh, to just making a uh, huge records and uh, tour uh, all yes. over the world. Well, that's true. Um, it is a lot of work being a father, and uh, and it's something that I love to do. I love being a dad, and um, but you have to just plan. You have to plan. You know, you you got to plan your day so that you have time to to do what you need to do with your kids and you have time to meet your fans and then play a concert and then, you know, to, you know, hang out with your, your kids and teach them school and all these various things. So I think that uh, it's something that I really love, but the world is also getting stranger and it, it's difficult as a parent to not worry about the world that your kids are growing up in. And, uh, 
and you want to help them the best that you can, you know? So um, it's hard work, but I've enjoyed doing it. And I think that we made sacrifices on the road in order to be good parents, you know, like uh, a lot of times after concerts, all the bands from the concert will, you know, go hang out together after a concert and, you know, have fun until three o'clock in the morning. And, you know, I couldn't do that because my kids would get up at six or seven o'clock in the morning. And so you, you have to say, no, I'm sorry, I can't, can't go hang out. I'm a dad and my kids are going to be up in a few hours. And we made those sacrifices and they paid off because my kids are wonderful. They're good people and, and they love other people and they love people from all sorts of different walks of life, you know, and no matter who they are, they can have conversations all around the world. So I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Which is more harder when you're playing in a band with your wife. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's talk about Russia once again. Do you have a favorite places in Russia? Maybe you have a little bit of time uh, to see some cities, maybe visit some places and stuff. Yes. Not only in Moscow and St. Petersburg, maybe it's a Baronish. Uh, maybe you, we have to talk a, li a little bit about Ukraine. I, the, the places that I've spent the most time are, of course, Moscow and St. Petersburg, because we've been there more often. And, uh, and I, love, I love those cities. We have spent time, though, in, in other places. It's just that we, I've been to so many cities, I can't remember the names of them. But also, Russia is so big. On the, on the last tour, and I think that it was 2019, I think, we went to the, the eastern side of Russia, and, um, which, which I had not spent time in before then. And I really loved the eastern side of Russia, which I hadn't spent much time in before. And it was really beautiful. And, and, uh, and, I, and of course, I can't even remember the names of the cities that I went to. But, you know, there were like there was great restaurants. And, um, you know, I don't know. I just really enjoyed some. We went to some Russian restaurants where they played Russian music, uh, like live Russian music. It was just really fun. But unfortunately, I can't remember the names of all the cities. Your favorite Russian food, maybe? Do you have a time to, uh, well, to have uh, any kind of uh, soaps? I don't know, uh, maybe meat or something? I, I tell you the truth, I can't remember everything that I've eaten because sometimes I go out with, with um, you know, uh, people from you know, local uh, promoters or something, and th they'll say, here, try this. This is called... And then they say it, and I always forget what it's called. But I, but I'm like, oh, I, I like it. I mean, of course, uh, you're famous for beef stroganoff, and I, I love that over the, uh, over there. It tastes different in Russia than it tastes. I like it a lot better in Russia than I like it in in America. And I've had lamb in Russia, which I've really loved. And uh, I, I I've I've just always enjoyed you know everything really. <laughs> I have a little game for you. I have a few cards with the traditional Russian food, with the, some of the characters from the fairy tales, uh, from the Russian cartoons. All you have to do, I will show you this card, and uh, you have to answer. Uh, I will name it, uh, name in that uh, on this card, and you have to choose which word it's called. I think. <laughs> Okay. okay, let's try it. At first, uh, you can get, I will name it uh, in Russian. Uh, there's going to be uh, three Russian words. You have decided uh, which word is a correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? Yes. Okay, let's try it. The first thing is uh, here. You can see it, I think. Okay. Which name uh, is this? And uh, what is like, let me try it once again. <laughs> It is a little bit harder for me to try to explain you what is uh, what this thing is. You can put it on your head. What is sound like in Russian? Kakoshnik, shapka, shlem. I think it's the second one. Kakoshnik. Um, was that the second one that you said? Uh, no, you said uh, a shap, 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 shapka. Shapka, shapka. Yeah, right. That's uh, it. No, but uh, oh. this this is a kakoshnik. Oh. This is a, like a traditional headdress for uh, women. Yes, I've seen them, uh, but, but I did not know the name. <laughs> okay, a little bit easier. Uh, name of this character. I think you could see it. 
I do see it, but I do not know his name. And what does he do? That's a question. Uh, okay. f- first name is Ilya Murimit. The second one is Alesha Popovich. And the third is Dabrini Nikilic. <laughs> <laughs> That's hard, I know. <laughs> that is hard. Say it again. What are the, what, what are the, the options? What is the name of this character? And yeah. what does he do? Yes. And what the first, the- uh, you, you should choose a name. Yes. The first one, Ilya Muromets. The second one, Alyosha Popovich. And the third one is Dabrini Nikitich. All right. I'm going the second one. Uh, no. <laughs> Once again, not right. It's uh, <laughs> Ilya Muromets. This is a character from Russian fairy tales. Uh, and he's like a, a warrior, like a superhero for uh-huh. in a Russian fairy tales. Yes. I, I, did, I did buy a couple of beautiful books of Russian fairy tales um, when I was in Russia, but they are written in Russian. So I I don't know, but I've just looked at them and and I really love them. I just don't know the characters. (laughs) So here's a couple cards. I think it's going to be a lot more easier for you. Um, I doubt it. (laughs) uh, The name of this food. Oh, yes, I know this. Uh, I I, I know the answer to this. Go ahead. Uh, the first one, kartoshka. The second one, uh, pelmeni. And the third one is macaroni. Oh, does it have um, meat inside? Yeah, right. Yes. All right. Say it. The, the names that I heard for, would they call it something different in Ukraine? Uh, maybe a meat dumpling or something. No. Okay. Okay. Ma- I- maybe traniki, I think. Right. Yes, that sounds familiar. That actually sounds more familiar. So maybe I had it in Ukraine. Say it again. What are the three names? Kartoshka, pelmeni, and uh, macaroni. Uh, pelmeni. Yeah, that's right. You did well. Okay. So, <laughs> and the last one. I don't want to don't want to struggle you too much because I have a lot of cards. I'm doing my homework. <laughs> so the last one, uh, the name of this character. <laughs> first one, it's a Baba Yaga. The second one, uh, Vasilisa Prekrasna. Third one is going to be Alenushka. Okay. What is the name of this Number character? One. Baba Yaga. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's a yeah. character from uh, Russian fairy tales. And uh, she's something like a boogeyman for the Americans. Uh, but she's living uh, in the forest uh, in the house that stands on a um, chicken legs. You could see it right here. Oh, oh, so, cool. <laughs> so, I like it. I like it. You do it well. That was uh, a little bit harder for you than for uh, Russian people. But you do great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So I think that's it. That's all the questions that uh, we have for you. Uh, thank you very I have, much. I have one more. I have one oh, question. okay, okay. <laughs> John, what is the best way or best things you know against hangover? I don't know anything about uh, hangover because I, I don't. Uh, I've never done drugs, and I ha- have have never had excessive alcohol. So thankfully. Maybe that's why I've been able to play music for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think, so. I think we're good. We've done it well. Uh, thank you very much for your time, for your clever answers. Uh, and uh, hope to see you very soon in Russia. And uh, Yeah, thank you, John. Thank you. You have a really great album, uh, a lost record, I mean. So I think... Uh, our su- subscribers uh, should go to uh, iTunes, Spotify, uh, buy it, and listen it everywhere. Beautiful. Well, thank you guys so much. I sure enjoyed talking to both of you and all the Skillet fans out there. I love you guys. I can't wait to come see you in your beautiful country again. So uh, until then, peace. Everybody keep rocking. Yeah. Everybody. Bye. See you soon. Have a nice day. Bye, guys. And golden.